This video delves deeper into function composition. We're going to look at function composition more generally and discuss the domain of composed functions. The domain of f composed with g is the set of all numbers x in the domain of g where g of x is in the domain of f. That sounds a little complicated, so re I'm going to restate it. Uh, what we need to do to find the domain of f composed with g is we need to intersect the domain of the cleaned up composed function with the domain of the inside function. Let f of x be equal to x squared plus 6 and g of x equals the square root of 5 minus x. We want to find f composed with g and state the domain in interval notation. f composed with g, the initial rewrite is again very important. This is equal to f of g of x g of x is defined right here to be the square root of 5 minus x. So we're simply going to replace g of x with the square root of 5 minus x. We therefore need to find f of the square root of 5 minus x. To do that, we're going to replace all the x's in our function f with the square root of 5 minus x. That'll be the square root of 5 minus x squared plus 6. We want to simplify this. We know a square and a square root are going to cancel out. This gives us 5 minus x plus 6. Combining like terms, we get that f composed with g is 11 minus x. That is our cleaned up composed function. Now we want to state the domain in interval notation. Well, the domain of f composed with g is equal to the domain of our cleaned up f composed with g intersected with the domain of whichever function was on the inside. And in this example, g was on the inside. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, what's the difference between f composed with g and our clean f composed with g? Well, this right here is our cleaned up f composed with g. We simplified it. Technically, this right here is a composed function, but it wasn't cleaned up and simplified. All right, let's find these two individual domains and then we'll intersect them. Starting with the domain of our clean f composed with g, f composed with g is 11 minus x. The domain of that is all real numbers, We don't have a variable in the denominator or under an even indexed radical, so we know it's all reals. Now we need to intersect that with the domain of our inside function, which was g. Now well, g is the square root of 5 minus x. Here we do have a variable under an even indexed radical. So to get the domain, I need to set the radicand greater than or equal to 0 and solve for x. That gives us 5 is greater than or equal to x, which I always like to rewrite as x is less than or equal to 5. 
Oh, now we need to intersect these two domains. I always put it on the number line and then look for the overlap. The domain of our clean composed function is all real numbers. And then the domain for our g is anything less than 5. Intersecting them, I'm looking for the overlap, and the overlap exists to the left of 5. And they both have arrows, so I know this is going to continue forever. I need to write that in interval notation, and that'll be the domain of our composed function. We get negative infinity to 5 included. Let's try another one. This time, let a of x be equal to 1 over x minus 10, and b of x be the absolute value of 2x plus 3. We want to find a composed with b and state the domain in interval notation. a composed with b, our rewrite is a of b of x. b of x is defined to be the absolute value of 2x plus 3. So really what we're looking for is a of the absolute value of 2x plus 3. Let's plug that absolute value into our function a everywhere we have an x. That'll be 1 over the absolute value of 2x plus 3 minus 10. We try to simplify this, but there's nothing to do here. a composed with b is 1 over the absolute value of 2x plus 3 minus 10. Now we need to find the domain. To find the domain of A composed with B, we need to intersect the domain of our cleaned up A composed with B with the domain of our inside function. And this time the inside function was B. Let's find these two individual domains, look for the overlap, That'll be the domain of our composed function. So starting with the domain of our clean A composed with B. This has a variable in the denominator of the fraction. So we need to figure out what values of x create a 0 in the denominator and then exclude those from the domain. We do that by setting the denominator equal to 0 and solving. Here we have an absolute value equation. The first thing to do is isolate the absolute value. The absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 10. Now that the absolute value is isolated, we need to break it up into two equations. 2x plus 3 equals 10 or 2x plus 3 equals negative 10. And we'll solve each of these for x. We get 2x to be 7, making x 7 halves. Or 2x to be equal to negative 13, so x is equal to negative 13 halves. These two numbers need to be excluded from the domain. There's no sense in writing interval notation for this domain. 
I just would wait until the end. But I'm taking note, these need to be excluded from the domain. We also need to find the domain of our inside function, which was b. b of x was equal to the absolute value of 2x plus 3. Since we don't have a variable in the denominator or under an even indexed radical, we know the domain here is all real numbers. I need to intersect all real numbers with excluding 7 halves and negative 13 halves from the domain. I'm going to put this on a number line. I need to exclude negative 13 halves and exclude 7 halves. That's the first domain. And then the second domain is all real numbers. Looking where those two intersect or overlap, well, it's going to be everything to the left of negative 13 halves. Everything in between negative 13 halves and 7 halves, and then everything to the right of 7 halves. Writing this in interval notation, we get negative infinity to negative 13 halves, not including. Union negative 13 halves to 7 halves, not including and then from 7 halves to positive infinity. Our last example in this section is a triple composition. We're going to let f of x be equal to x to the third plus 1, g of x be equal to 5x plus 1, and h of x be equal to the cube root of 9 minus x. We want to find f composed with h composed with g. I will not ask for the domain on a triple composition. Well, let's start with the rewrite because we know that's one of the most important parts. f composed with h composed with g is rewritten f of h of g of x. So we just go left to right with the variables. Starting with the innermost, g of x is defined to be 5x plus 1. So we are going to substitute that in. This gives us f of h of 5x plus 1. That was our innermost. Now we're going to move on to our next innermost, which would be h of 5x plus 1. We're going to have to do some work to find this. So coming down below, let's find h of 5x plus 1. We're going to replace all the x's in h with the quantity 5x plus 1. This is equal to the cube root of 9 minus, make sure you put this in parentheses, 5x plus 1. That whole thing is x, so we need to subtract the whole thing. Simplifying this, we can distribute the negative. That's the cube root of 9 minus 5x minus 1. And then combining like terms, we get the cube root of 8 minus 5x. That's h of 5x plus 1. I'm going to substitute this right in. So now we're looking for, and this will be the end of our composition, we're looking for f of
the cube root of 8 minus 5x. Once we find that, that'll be our answer. Let's plug it in and simplify. It'll be the cube root of 8 minus 5x cubed plus 1. The cube and the cube root cancel out, leaving us with 8 minus 5x plus 1. Our triple composition, f composed with h composed with g, is equal to 9 minus 5x.